well this is uh, is working so um, it's splitting I'm having to wear a, a rubber glove to get the get the, the grip to push it through it's actually splitting it's it's not very accurate but uh, it's good enough it's gonna give me some long lengths of I've got to a point where there's a split in that one it's going to give me some long lengths of uh, split uh, laths, which look look the part. So it's uh, paint it brown, and then paint it grey, and then the bits that are going to be seen more are uh, get dry brushed with a light lighter version of the grey. It's very wobbly, partly because I'm holding the camera and partly because it is actually very wobbly on the single support. And um, yeah, I went to the Tutankhamun exhibition in London today and uh, it was wonderful and uh, quite moving to see wonderful uh, sculptures and beautiful boxes and models mostly of ships and to realize that 3,300 years ago there were craftsmen beavering away making stuff and showing great care and patience and creativity and my work is nowhere near as good as some of theirs though actually some of the some of the stuff, some of the boats and things were quite primitive. They put in all sorts of work into the tomb of Tutankhamun, tomb made by all sorts of different people of different skill levels and styles. Ah, there you go. It's a little bit of philosophy for the evening. Got to figure out how to do the thatch now and make it look thick. This is the chimney that was a, um, a, a the inner tube of some kitchen roll and has been sort of sticking out the top of the building for the last several weeks just to remind me not to forget the top of the chimney most of the chimney goes up through the building and this is what I'm doing with the uh, the thatch that's that little side bit so unlike the lighter coloured teddy bear fur when I when I cut this it falls apart so that's cut off there and quite a lot of the pile comes away and leaves you with a bare bit uh, ah, bare bit of teddy bear fur um, so run some glue across that and have to leave that overnight I folded over those edges because this is still that little piece which I'm sort of using as a, a test piece that's going to go on there rather than the actual upper roof sections and I'm going to need to cut some more to get that thickness this is how I'm going to try and satisfy myself that I'm doing a better job of the thatch than other uh, people's attempts at thatch buildings because thatch is really thick there's a lot of it it's probably I don't know 50 or 100 thicknesses of wheat straw to make up a, a waterproof thatch uh, and I'm going to have to trim out the the backing there in order to get the right effect so that I'm not just going to use twice as much fur to cover the surface areas I need because it's a little bit expensive I'm going to Fill up everything apart from the bottom edge, which this, which with this, which is the, the leftover um, soft flexible foam from all the way back when uh, I did the uh, the tower, and that hopefully will be able to make let me make my my roofs look sort of gently gently curved and organic, which is how they go when they're supported by um, old. Boeing cheap timbers. There's always uh, plenty of things to distract me, like painting miniatures, but uh, I've actually scratch built the finial for the very top of the tower 
So he's ready to be painted up to look like uh, a lead statue. And uh, meanwhile, uh, that piece is just a support for the uh, apex beam in the middle. And these are the gable ends in the process of painting. Um, that is the first piece of thatch roof, which is now uh, glued into place. It needs a little bit of tweaking and fixing, wrenching those pins out, which I seem to have glued in very thoroughly. Can't do that one-handed, but needs some tweaking and fixing and disguising here. This a uh, long piece of thatch, which hasn't been painted yet, is proving very fiddly. You can see the problem, it's the cut, the cut at the top edge actually cuts the, the fibre and wants to expose the, the backing. So once that's cut, I just have to be very, very careful not to disturb those clumps of fur, because if I do, uh, they end up falling to the floor. Um, that corner was particularly difficult to engineer. So this is all more about just very fiddly, delicate engineering, trying to get that right. And I'm trying to decide at the moment between sticking with what the plan was, um, which was to get this approximately right and then take it off um, and spray it take it as a long strip um, spray it with the grey paint then take it to another location which I don't think I told you about around here that is actually uh, though I sprayed it with the grey paint I decided it just wasn't solid enough so that's had a spray of um, very matte Vallejo varnish on it which really made it much more solid and yeah the, the, the decision is whether or not to do it the same as I did that first piece or whether or not to stick it all into position so I don't lose too much fur uh, in moving around and then try to spray it in situ and that will be quite tricky because I have to do I have to do a lot of masking I think and I'm the height of this at the moment is sort of almost eye level. So I need to keep the whole thing on the oh. sculpture stand, but the sculpture stand is on its uh, it's on its lowest setting. So I have to lift the whole thing down onto the floor or onto the tops of those bins or something to work at a different height. But there's lots of other little uh, jobs to do, fiddly things and finishing off lots of tweaking that I can do while I'm prevaricating about the important decisions like how to proceed on that. Well, uh, I decided, I think really while I was filming that last rambling clip, uh, I decided that that's going to have to be the way to do it. So I've glued it down with two different part types of glue because the upper bit is the uh, the foam that doesn't stick to anything um, except with um, contact adhesive. And the lower part is glued on with uh, styro glue. And I'm going to next come in. I, I've tried to tidy up the, the edge with scissors, but it doesn't work. The scissors just aren't sharp enough or something. I'm going to bring in my beard trimmer and tidy up, tidy up that bottom edge and uh, maybe just put some little loose okay. loose bits of fur in to fill some gaps in the top edge and then try to spray it grey and then varnish it in situ. March uh, 2020 and I've had to look back in my old videos to just remind myself exactly how I did um, the bricks because I need 200 bricks for the chimney over 200 bricks. That's taken a while. Um, 
steady but surely wins wins the race there's 200 cut and they're going to sort of round off their edges and then uh, start painting them up it's been a, a long but um fairly pleasant meditative sort of an evening um sitting here with uh, this on my on my lap uh listening to podcasts and sticking it all onto the chimney and there it is now it looks uh looks a bit of a mess but as i learned before um when it dries off the uh, mortar that's sticking out can be uh, picked off fairly easy uh, easily and then just uh, just touched up and um the bricks changed uh, just very slightly to make one or two of them look slightly darker one or two slightly more orange like they were in different parts of the kiln and uh, it's taken a long time but it's been fun but wouldn't you know it ran out of mortar just at the very last bit and I'm too tired now it's about two or three o'clock in the morning I can't uh, I can't concentrate anymore um, but tomorrow I will uh, finish off that top course and uh, start assembling the twisty uh, chimney pot that's going to go on the top of the stack so 24 hours later um, I haven't been working on it for 24 hours but I've worked on it for I think probably an hour and a half getting on something like that just to finish off the uh, the top course I still haven't done the cleaning up it immediately changes in 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 weight um, last night when I put it down it weighed I suppose about as much as an egg and it must weigh less than half that now so much moisture in the in the paint um, evapor evaporates out as it dries without any shrinkage or cracking which is quite amazing um, so I've just reduced the top there a bit of cardboard in to give it some structure and strength which I might paint black later and then on uh, little pieces of paper about 13 mil square I've done these and uh, when they have dried, um, I may try to do that tonight actually, um, there's some PVA on the paper um, because the mortar doesn't actually have very much real um, mortaring strength. When those have dried, um, I will stack them uh, and I will rotate each um, course by five or ten degrees maybe um, to make my uh, twisting top of the chimney stack and uh, we'll see how that works it's another day and uh, we're in March 2020 and England is locked down because of the coronavirus COVID-19 and uh, the pubs have finally been forced to close and almost everybody's just staying in so who knows what will become of us but um, there will be time for art the chimney is stuck together I, I had to put a, a rod up the other part of the chimney stack and uh, it's again I'm having to leave it alone for another 24 hours just to dry before I can start uh, picking away the excess um, grout mortar and then um, filling the gaps which is called pointing in brickwork I forgot the word there for the moment um, and then just touching up and refining the colours of some of the bricks and while that's doing, I'm working on the outline of the roofs. Now the roofs have got to have that kind of distinctive sag. So I'm, uh, I've just laid over a carrier bag, which I'm now going to cut to shape. And then I'll have to do a sort of, um, uh, I think it's called a, a 
not a pleat. I think it's got a tuck in or, or, or like a or a dart or something in tailoring or dressmaking to get the shape, um, the rather organic shape of that roof, um, which will then be traced out onto a corrugated card, um, which particularly if I make it damp while I'm shaping it, will form the basic support for the roof. Um, and other than that little bit of uh, roof there, I still haven't really plucked up the courage to start doing the spray painting on the rest of the roof. Um, but I suppose when I've got the rest of the thatch, when I've got the thatch of the top um, done, I shall do it all in one go, I think, just to try and keep the general colouring consistent. That's what that looks like before I uh, use it to we use it as a template to mark out onto a uh, corrugated cardboard. That's the roof starting to happen. I'm sort of beating it into into shape and preparing more pieces of cardboard there. And the other thing is that he has finished. I looked at source images to uh, try to make sure I had him painted to look like a lead statue. But the more I looked at sort of weathered outdoor statues the more I saw that uh, lead statues look pretty much like stone statues anyway so there's no real way to differentiate them visually I haven't stuck him on permanently yet but I'm, I'm pleased with the look that's the chimney finally finished or almost finally finished it'll have some um, weathering uh, maybe some moss growing on the, the ledge bits of it um, when the outside of the building is uh, sort of completed and given its final overall stages of weathering but um, it's got to the stage now where it can be glued into place and I can get on with building the roof around it. It's taken um, a, a week really of working sessions, it kept breaking apart and being much more fiddly but that's what it looks like with some cleaning up and a little bit of uh, just just treatment, making some odd little black patches on some of the bricks where they would have been a little bit more burnt in the kiln. The roof almost coming together. You can see how I've decided to do that. It's being sort of pinned and partially glued, and uh, I'm going to have to allow that to set for 24 hours and then try and sort of pull the top bits together. I decided to do it with dry cardboard rather than dampen it in order to bend it into shape um, because if you do that when it dries out it likes to find its own shape so it's being done with these tucks and splits really and then there'll be overhanging bits that I've got to um, trim off and then in the process of doing that I realised that discovered that I've almost run out of styro glue I think I've used two maybe three bottles of this now I'm gonna have to buy another bottle of that and uh, that will take some days to come even if it comes at all with the world shutting down due to coronavirus and then also in the process of doing it, I've realised that uh, I forgot about these bits, so I've got to shape those in before I start doing the doing the thatch. And of course, uh, my little cruck framed cottage that's going to go on the top on some kind of stilts. That's all got to be factored in and planned in. So there's a lot more, uh, even though in some ways. It's now sort of starting to show me what the finished building will look like. There's still a lot of engineering to be done. There's also this strange arrangement of the loading bay and some sort of crane that I've got to uh, figure out, think out, replan.